Hi, my name is Professor Shokwe Williams Elegbe. I am a law professor based at Stellenbosch University in South Africa. I've been asked by Health Boxes to talk a little bit about my journey um, living and thriving with sickle cell. Um, so, as I said, I'm a law professor. I work in South Africa. I've been an academic for 19 years now. Um, I started working in university in Scotland, I moved to university in England, I moved back home to Nigeria where I'm from, I worked there for a few years and then three years ago I moved to South Africa and this is where I am now. So um, my journey with sickle cell um, is, uh, what do I say, <laughs> sickle cell is, is a fact, it's something in my body. Um, I don't necessarily think that it defines um, who I am it's you know it's just another aspect of me and something that I have to take into account in my daily life but apart from that I try not to pay it too much attention so it doesn't take too much of my my time so um, one of the things that I've had to do in terms of um, you know living as a, a mother and a wife and a, you know a worker um, I've had to make sure that I manage my time, manage my energy. I've had to make sure that I always have people around me that can help me with things that are um, challenging, you know, especially in terms of, you know, managing kids and running a house and all the stuff that goes with, with that. I've always had people who lived with me who helped me with that because I think physical activity is uh this is you know is a little bit more difficult for me it takes more out of me than i suppose it might take from from other people so that's one of the things that i've tried to do in building my life to make sure that i've had i have access to people who are either paid or unpaid who live with me who help me with housework um the other thing that i've done is that i've you know obviously i'm in an occupation that is not physically challenging is mentally challenging but not physically channel challenging because you know for me physical exertion was one of my triggers um so i work as an academic um i i get about in the sense that i travel a lot um and that has been problematic because um of course with sickle cell um the combination of the um you know the low um the, the low oxygen of light and the air pressure, um, you know, can trigger a sickle cell event. So I found the flights have been problematic for me, especially as I've gotten older, um, you know, more likely to have a sickle cell event after a flight if I don't take precautions, precautions being things like, you know, hydrating, making sure I'm, you know, drinking water. You know, in fact, I start what I call my water therapy a few days before I get on any flight. Um, and you know, I take painkillers, I carry painkillers with me on the flights. I'm taking long term a drug called hydroxyurea, which is supposed to reduce um, sickle cell events. Um, you know, so I make sure that I've, you know, taking my medication religiously and all that to just make sure that I don't have a sickle cell event on the flights because that, um, you know, screaming in a confined space is, is not pleasant for anybody. <laughs> so I try to, to, to take care of myself before I travel. Um, with my kids, my pregnancies were, um, the first pregnancy was relatively unproblematic, but towards the end, um, I did something a bit silly. So I was, I think eight and a half months pregnant already. And then, uh, you know, I decided I needed to wash the bathroom and, and spring clean the house, which in hindsight was not very smart. I ended up having a sickle cell event, you know, ended up going to hospital and then needing to have an emergency cesarean as a result of that. My second pre pregnancy um, was a lot more problematic. In the nine months, I was probably hospitalized five times um, with, you know, just having sickle cell events, you know, basically all the time. Um, and so with that pregnancy as well, I had to have an emergency cesarean. Um, but you know, my children are fine. They are, I think their genotype is AS. Yes. Their genotype is AS. So they're carriers, but they're not, you know, they, they don't, they don't have, 
um, SS or SC genotype. Um, in terms of raising them, of course, it's been difficult. As I said, I always try to make sure I have a community of people around me that, you know, that can assist me when I need help and all that. So with my work, um, you know, I try to just get on with things. Um, I, you know, I studied um, normally. I did have some times when the stress of exams meant that I had a sickle cell crisis or a sickle cell event um, and would end up in hospital. But, you know, I was always very fortunate that it didn't really affect my my education. So I have a, you know, a bachelor's degree in law. Um, I have a master's degree in law and I have a doctorate degree in, in public procurement law as well. Um, so I've tried not to give sickle cell too much pride of place in my life. I am aware of it. It's like a a buzzing noise in the background <laughs> um, so I, I manage it but I, I it, as I said at the beginning it doesn't define me um, you know it's just you know a fact of life it has caused me some complications um, so I I was diagnosed with um, AVN something called avascular necrosis um, after my second daughter was born in 2012 um, and that has meant that I had to have my right shoulder replaced last year and have another procedure on my left shoulder because my shoulders were affected by the EVN as well as my hips. Um, so there have been complications, but as I said, you know, I live one day at a time. Um, I trust God to see me through. Um, I rely a lot on my friends, on my family, you know, for, for help. Um, and you know, so far God has been has been faithful. I'm still here. Um, you know, I'm in my mid forties now. Um, you know, I'm hoping to have, you know, at least another thirty to forty years. <laughs> uh, and then, uh, and then after that, I'm, I'll be ready to cross over to the other side. Um, so my tips would be, have a community around you. If you're a woman or a man. Don't marry somebody that doesn't have compassion. Don't marry somebody that, you know, is looking for a, a slave. <laughs> you know, marry someone who understands your limitations and is happy to be part of your journey. Um, make sure you have a community. You must have people who are there for you, who you can rely on. Um, take your medicine. Get yourself a good hematologist. My hematologist has been fantastic. Um, you know, you know, do your regular blood tests, your regular checkups, um, you know, and don't be, don't be, don't try to be a hero. Don't try to be Superman or Superwoman one day at a time, you know, one day at a time. Um, and, you know, we will get there. So, um, that's from me. As I said, my name is Shopware William Selegbe. I hope you have a great day. Bye.